All right, so the next question is, how can a Profit coder learn DRG? I think they see those, um, they see DRG and they get scared. <laughs> it's not scary, okay. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to be talking about a little bit of the differences of coding. So we've always hear about profi, so most people don't understand or know what profi means. So that just means the professional fee uh, coders. And those really look at the professional uh, fees of physicians. Uh, so this is more in the outpatient side or even in a, um, you can work for a hospital system that have medical groups attached to it. This is what you would be doing as well. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between the, those more than this, these three types, but these are like the general. Uh, and so the hospital outpatient coders are really looking at all the conditions and procedures that the provider documents. Uh, also, you know, any emergency settings that support the facility billing only. Um, obviously, some outpatients, you know, you can be looking at some of these pro fee areas as well. So it just kind of depends on your role. Uh, I know in previous roles of mine that I was working on their pro fee side, uh, but we had some members of my team in the compliance team that worked more on their, you know, facility side, working with them on their pro fee, I mean, their facility based coding. So now, inpatient, this is where we're really going to be digging into the DRG. So DRGs, uh, which is the diagnosis related groups, uh, and this is more with inpatient and how much resource did those services for that member or that uh, patient during the hospital stay, how much resources did they absorb? Uh, and that's really what you look at. And you know, diagnosis sequence is important in any uh, coding that you do, knowing your coding, coding guidelines, if there are specific guidelines regarding sequencing, especially, you know, sepsis, that's one thing that you really want to understand, as well as HIV-related um, coding guidelines. So not only would those DRG look at, you know, diagnosis, di uh, diagnoses, procedures, but also any comorbidities or complications, which is also known as CC. You'll see a lot of abbreviations used in inpatient settings, you know, you have the DRG, there are actually different varieties of DRG, but you also have the CC, which is the comorbidities and complications, and then MCC, so major complications and comorbidities. Um, those things you see a lot, and actually if you have AAPC's ICD-10-CM manual, there actually are symbols that's had uh, to the right of each code, if they are applicable to, you know, the symbol, that will indicate if it's a CC, MCC, HCC, or RxHCC, you know, for those that are risk-adjusted coders. And so that's a wonderful tool to have. I know I have mine uh, regarding this because of my role as a fraud investigator for a health plan in the risk adjustment side. And so when the facility looks at or reviews documentations for this, they look for any supplies, any other services that are used and that's provided by that facility. And so like, you know, any of the bedrooms that's used where the patient stays during the visit uh, and any procedures or anything that happens or develops during their hospitalization stay. Um, and so this is where we really want to focus on. This is why whenever a patient is admitted, this is what they call a working DRG. So it's not a final one, but it's one of those that are, you know, developed. Obviously, there are some instances and conditions that are hospital acquired. So that obviously plays an effect in your DRG assignment and can impact the financial uh, side of how the, how much that facility will be, you know, reimbursed because you are deemed, you know, for the uh, specific um, HAC or hospital acquired conditions. So what is a DRG? So as we said before, diagnose, the DRG is a diagnosis related group and this looks at, um, classifies as different hospital cases regarding diagnoses, procedures, age, sex, discharge status. Discharge status is an important factor of DRGs, as well as um, POAs are present on admissions, and we'll be talking about that in a little bit. So this is uh, DRG, so for reimbursement, and that replaces that cost-based uh, reimbursement or payment methodology uh, that was once used by Medicare and other payers. So 
now we always hear about this performance-based uh, reimbursement or payment methodology. So this is kind of where we're coming from. And then, so next, what you hear a lot about in DRG is the CMI or case mix index. And this is an important part on how uh, it impacts your overall scores, uh, how you are assigning your DRGs. So DRGs uh, or the patients, this is the, 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 excuse me, this is determines the allocation of the resources that takes, um, that are being used for the patient. And so obviously the higher uh, CMI that you have for that patient, obviously to a payer or, or somebody that's the reimbursement, it means that the that patient has had more complications or more resources were allocated to that that patient for the services, and that's an important thing to understand and for the providers to document. So, as uh, if any of those that have taken the CCS from the the coding uh, certifications. Uh, Certified Coding Specialist from AHIMA, uh, DRGs are actually an important part of that exam. Uh, obviously, the uh, CCS exam has all varieties of information uh, that they'll be testing you on, but AHIMA is really focused all on, uh, besides AT, um, IT, but inpatient um, information. And so the, you'll get hit heavily with the DRGs and inpatient-related information. So actually, it took a... Um, an example from the CCS study guide. If you can just scroll back up a little bit, Alicia, oh, sorry. Sure. Um, so with the CMI, there are different ways you can calculate it. The main one that's been used is the average sum of the relative weight for a specific DRG. And you can go onto the CMS website and find all of this information, the new draft that's coming out. Uh, I believe it's like version 32 or 34 or something like that. I can't remember at the moment. Uh, so, but this is dividing the sum of the weights of the DRG for the patients discharged during that period, divided by the total number of patients discharged. Okay, so if the, the question that we'll be looking at, what is the CMI or the case mix index for the information provided? And so at this table, you see one column for the, uh, the DRG, and MS, this means Medicare. Um, there, as I said, there's different varieties of the DRG. So as stated before, you look at the relative weight and the number of patients that are, have been discharged. And so what this question, remember you're supposed to add the sum. And so what you do for each of these three lines, you would multiply 2.0 times 10 plus 1.5 times 10 plus 1.0 times 10. And then you, div you add all that up. And then you divide by 30 because that's the number of patients that were discharged. And that will get you your answer. Uh, if you just scroll down a little bit more to the next page, I believe is where the answer is. And I kind of gave you an example of how you would calculate that. Okay. So as I stated a little while ago, the POAs or those present on admission indicators are an important factor in how uh, inpatients or DRGs are related. And so, you know, you have your Y indicator, N, U, W, or 1. So a lot of this, if you're unsure of when, uh, if a condition was present on admission, you know, regarding the documentation, this is we're talking about a working DRG. Uh, and this is where you, you want to, you know, have all the information that you can. This is where you see a lot of CEIs or uh, clinical documentation improvement uh, specialists or, uh, employees that work with the providers or those that really try to improve to have all the imp appropriate information to assign the you know those specific DRGs or those uh, diagnoses because that is crucial in you know your reimbursement purposes. Obviously, if you don't have the proper documentation, you and they do a lot of you know use up a lot of resources but that documentation does not reflect that, obviously that has an impact. So this is where a lot of facilities or organizations are really implementing CDI programs. And once they have that really implemented, they notice and they've seen you know, from a financial standpoint, the importance of having clear, concise documentation. And that is so, so crucial. Uh, not only for you know patient safety, continuity of care, but 
it also helps with uh, you know telling the whole story or the painting the picture of the patient, the their health status, uh, if you want to say that. So, like I said, how CDI or documentation it can impact the, the revenue of a hospital. So, with DRGs or inpatients, they are uh, they are done or you know uh, reimbursed through the inpatient prospective payment system, and so which is also known as the IPPS. But with these, the diagnoses and procedures are assigned, and then they are grouped into one specific MSDRG. And once they have been assigned, you know, with the relative weights, um, that really determines, the, you know, the amount of reimbursement that the facility will be uh, receiving for that patient. So obviously, like I said before, the more resources that are absorbed for that patient's stay, the higher the re reimbursement. Um, also, you know, it depends if there are any comorbidities or complications or any other major complications. Uh, or comorbidities that, that the patient already has, because that definitely takes an impact, impact on the treatment. It makes a difference on, um, you know, the the plan of care of definitely. you know what's going to happen to the to the patient, to, depending on, um, like, if they had a they had a heart attack and they go in and they do a bypass. Well, then they then they go into AFib. Did they have AFib before they? we're in or after because it's going to change the plan of care you know do we have to put a pacemaker in on top of doing the bypass things like that correct and that's another reason why they have these POA indicators uh, that so they, they can kind of keep track of were there any conditions that they acquired during the hospital so obviously that's not present on the mission uh, and so that's one way that they can keep up because that does have an impact on the facility. Are they uh, having a, uh, there are safety procedures and uh, policies and procedures set in place, and are they following them? Are they, you, you know, sanitar uh, sanitization is really important, especially in the hospital mm -hmm. setting, even more so during this flu season. And so that's why, you know, is there, is there a way that this hospital acquired condition can that have been avoided? Uh, and so this is why those present on the mission indicators are so important in reporting per, for reporting purposes. Now, for just like as in any, you know, outpatient, inpatient, any condition that affects the, or extends that length of stay for that patient, that's what they talk about regarding complications, comorbidities, or even those major or the NCCs. And so this is why it's important to include anything that impacts that care. And that's why the same things with providers that if you are, you know, you they only see you, for example, in the outpatient state, they only see you for, you know, sinusitis, but they also have diabetes, you know, other complications or chronic conditions. Obviously, with that provider, it, it does impact their medical decision making on what kind of treatment plan they can put them on. So it doesn't, doesn't there are not any. Uh, drug interactions with, you know, the other chronic conditions like the diabetes, was that, especially diabetes, that's an important thing. And so with other outpatients or other payment methodologies, you have the hospital outpatient perspective uh, payment system and then the ambulatory payment classifications, which is, you know, there are some other uh, uh, DRGs. Like I said, you have your all, patient, uh, all patients DRG and then you have your APRs, which is all patients related. Um, and so this was saying, you know, documentation is crucial because if you do not have the proper documentation to select, you know, a more specific code and those resources are being drained from the hospital for that patient, this is definitely, you know, has a correlation to your financial for that facility and that can definitely be an issue. So I wanted to say, I think this is one of the very few things, or the last things that I have left. And so... There are some things that you hear about in DRG. You have your severity of illness, risk of mortality, and length of stay. And this is the length of stay is an important thing because Medicare has their own set um, or their average time that they believe that for a specific condition they should be in the hospital. So obviously, if you're below that length of stay, they may be looking at okay, what are you doing differently, or did that really warrant a you know inpatient stay? Also. You know, obviously, if you have a lot more than that, that average length of stay that Medicare states, what's going on? What are, have there, were there any complications? Uh, or did they acquire any other conditions while being in the hospital? So this is why, you know, whenever you work for a facility or inpatient stay, 
doing an analysis of your length of stay visits is really uh, crucial to you know, your overall reimbursement program and even more from a you know compliance standpoint what's going on there why are we having such a high volume of certain conditions that are way over or even double you know what that length of stay should be that's fantastic and I just thought of an example uh, uh, in my morbid mind but uh, you know you have a patient comes in through the ER an 80 year old female who has a uh, altered mental status and they uh, find out she's dehydrated and she has a UTI okay not a big deal overall relatively um, healthy so they admit her and the protocol would be you know 24 hours um, mm -hmm. hydrate her get her on antibiotics and everything well they failed to mention that hey, she has osteoporosis uh, altered mental status she's confused she gets up to go to the bathroom she falls and she breaks her hip come to find out she has osteoporosis so now she has a broken hip but she was but she was admitted under you know a UTI <laughs> and uh, so now she's going to be in the hospital longer so she goes in and she has to have pins put in her hip so they do that and then she gets a staph infection so here you've got a person that came in for you know something relatively simple and you're going to and you know are you going to get dinged for several things yes but you know you could go downhill from uh, just by not noting that the patient had osteoporosis, um, if that had been mentioned, you know, uh, would it have made a difference? Who knows? But still, it's little things like that in DRGs that that can make a huge impact. Um, you know, uh, doing hip surgery on a patient that has osteoporosis versus a person that doesn't is going to make a difference in how long they stay and their treatment and the protocol of where they're going to go afterwards and stuff. So that's a really good good one. Thank you very much, Skylar. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.